Another approximation procedure using bracketing method is regular falsi. This method approximates roots in shorter iteration steps than bisection method. Learn more in numerical solutions to CE problems. Regular falsi is also known as false position as this is a trial and error procedure by substituting a value in the function. Just like the previous assumption, this method expects that the function of x is 0. The algorithm follows most of the steps in the bisection method, with only a change in the formula for determining the approximate and the identification when to stop iterating. If in bisection method we assume the approximate by taking the mid value of the upper and lower limits, there is a different method used by regular falsi. Assuming that in a graph, the lower limit has been drawn by identifying a value of x, then plugging this value into the function to have the y coordinate. The same process is used to draw out the upper limit, helping us to understand how the curve looks. Computing these limits in two different signs, we can conclude that our root intersects the x-axis, but it doesn't follow the convergence at midpoint. In regular falsi, linear interpolation is utilized to approximate the value of c. How do we work with linear interpolation? When we connect the two points with a straight line, we can come up with the dimensions from the lower limit as the following. The upper limit dimensions would also be identified. By taking similar triangles, we can take ratio and proportion such that, starting with the lower limit, we can have c minus a all over the function of a. Taking the triangle drawn by the upper limit, we can equate b less c all over the function of b. Cross multiply terms to get the following equation, and expanding terms, we have c times the function of b minus a times the function of b is equal to b times the function of a minus c times the function of a. Let's try to extract c, so place the variable in one side and others to the other side. And we get c times the quantity of the functions of a plus b is equal to a times the function of b plus b times the function of a. By simplifying terms, we would have c as a times the function of b plus b times the function of a all over the total of the functions of a and b. Another important thing to check is the function of a is taken below the x-axis, which makes the coordinate negative. Thus, we can reverse the terms giving the final formula. An alternative formula that we can utilize in regular falsi method is instead of using two small triangles, we are going to compute with a bigger total triangle. Again, by taking similar triangles, the triangle that includes the lower limit can be drawn as c minus a all over the function of a. This is going to be equated with the bigger triangle having the dimensions as shown, so the expression becomes b minus a all over the functions of a and b. By cross multiplying the denominator of the left term, we arrive at c minus a is equal to b less a times the quantity function of a all over the functions of a plus b. We can isolate c by transposing a to the other side, and similarly, since the function of a is a negative, we reverse signs, making the equation c is equal to a plus b minus a times the quantity function of a all over the functions of a plus b.
in summary, regular fallacy has a similar procedure with bisection method. The only difference in the iteration is the way we identify the approximate. Bisection method uses the mid value of the limits, but regular fallacy will be using linear interpolation for it. Either formula for regular fallacy should let you arrive at the same value of the convergent. Let's show the procedure with this first example. Determine the root of x cubed minus 2x less 5 is equal to 0 using regular fallacy method. We are going to assume the limits as the problem has not provided any. In case we take x as 0, the function of x turns out to be negative 5. Now work with x as 1. The function becomes negative 6. Searching further by plugging x as 2. The function of x becomes 1, and this is still negative, so let's try another limit of x as 3. Its function turns out to be positive 16. So we can take the bracket of lower limit as 2 and upper limit as 3. Proceed with solving for the approximate using the formula. In this case, let's use the first formula. So, 2 times 16 less 3 times negative 1 all over 16 less negative 1 yields 2.0588. Place the values in the table to easily and clearly check further iteration. So A is taken as 2 with its function as negative 1. B is 3 with a resulting function value of positive 16. The approximate was also solved as 2.0588. To complete the table, plug the value of C into the equation to have negative 0.3911. The negative value of the function of C in the first iteration would imply that the lower limit would need to be adjusted as the value of the approximate. Thus, A becomes 2.0588 with its function of A as negative 0.3911. The upper limit B is still the same 3.0 with its function of B as positive 16. Having all the parameters present, look for the next value of C using the formula. That would be computed as positive 2.0813, and the function is then taken as negative 0 0.1468. Moving on to the third iteration, note that the value of the function of c is negative, so take c as replacement for the lower limit. Thus, 2.0813 would be a, with its function of a given as negative 0 0.1468. B would still remain the same as 3.0 and function of B would still be 16. Then, using the same formula, we would have to take value of C as 2.0897 this time. Plugging this value into the function of C, we are going to have negative 0 0.0540 as the third iteration for the function. Let's do the next iteration based on the sign of the last function of C, which is a negative. Thus, C, which is 2.0897, will be replacing the former lower limit with function of A taken as negative 0.054. The upper limit remains at 3, and function of B is still 16. Complete the table by computing for the next approximate with the formula, and that is 2.0927. The function of C with this value turns out to be negative 0.0206. We can iterate further to reduce f of C. So, in continuation, check the last function of C. It gives a negative value which means that the lower limit is again replaced with the value of C, which is 2.0927. This is followed by the new function of A as negative 0.0206, whereby B is still 3 and F of B is still 16. Solve for the new value of C from the formula, and after plugging, the value is simplified as 2.0927. 
2.0939. Taking the function of c with this fourth iteration shows that the function of c is negative 0 0.007269, which is almost 0. So we can stop the iteration and identify the approximate truth of x as 2.0939. Example number 2. Determine the root of 5 sine squared of x less 8 cosine to the 5th power of x is equal to 0 using regular falsy method. So again, assume initial limits. Let's take a is equal to 0. The function of x turns out to be negative 8. Work on another limit, say b is equal to 1. The function of x turns out to be positive 3.1720. Since we already have different signs in the function, we can use the assumed limits as the initial values in the bracket. If we use the formula derived, we have 0 0.7161. Continue by taking the function of c, and the value turns out to be positive 0 0.2002. Before proceeding with the solution, Let's check if we arrive at the same approximate when we use the second formula. The formula being c is equal to a plus b minus a times the quantity of function of a all over the difference of function of a with b. By plugging the values, we would get 0 0.7161, which is the same value we arrived at earlier with the other formula and this value will still yield the same function of c as positive 0 0.2002. So we can go ahead and fill in the table by placing the values of a, b, function of a, function of b, the computed c, and its function. Now, work on the iteration based on the sign of function of c. Since the value involves a positive sign, this would imply that c would replace the upper limit, and the function of b becomes positive 0 0.2002. The lower limit a will still remain the same as well as its function of a. Continue completing the table by using the formula. So c sub 2 is taken as 0.6986. Then the function using this value is negative 0 0.0380. Let's move on to the third iteration, and based from the sign of the function c, which is negative, we replace the lower limit with 0 0.6986, and the new function of a is negative 0 0.038. The upper limit b is still 0 0.7161 with its function as positive 0 0.2002. Complete the row by taking c sub 3 as 0 0.7014 and take the function by plugging this value in the equation and it would result to positive 0 0.0044. With the function of c as very near 0, we can stop iteration, but instructions might require more decimal places. In this example, we can take the approximate truth of x as 0 0.7014.